Thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View, Ladies T. We've got a great show for you tonight, but before we start, I want to tell you about one of our sponsors, Swiss America. Our country's facing so many problems these days under Joe Biden. The last thing any of us need is more to worry about. Unfortunately, we now have to fear losing our freedom and privacy with the Democrats' new push for a digital dollar that could allow the government to tell us what we can and cannot buy with our own hard-earned money. That's why I'm encouraging every one of you tuning into the show right now to get The Secret War on Cash, an insightful report created by my friends at Swiss America. With this report, you'll learn how to protect yourself from the threats facing our freedom and your hard-earned money. The report is available right now to my listeners free of charge. Just call 800-289-2646 or visit www.swissamerica.com slash Trump for your free report. Tonight, we are joined by Editor-in-Chief of the Post-Millennial, Libby Emmons, as well as PragerU's Alexis Wilkins. Libby and Alexis, welcome to the show this evening. Um, I, everybody keeps talking about the State of the Union. We all know it was just absolutely a disaster in terms of if you were the person who was running for president again and say you were in an election year and you had a moment to speak to the entire nation a la the State of the Union, you would think you would go all out, Libby, and say, here's what I've done for this country. Here's, I'm going to give you all the reasons you should vote for me for president of the United States for a second term. We didn't get that from old Joe. They had him all hopped up on, uh, I don't know what he was, but he came out real hot, real mean. And he then went on to talk of course, he used the wrong word. Um, he called her Lincoln Riley instead of Lake and Riley. Of course, the young lady in Georgia who was murdered by an illegal immigrant, uh, supposedly. He used the word illegal, Libby, to describe the person who is charged with her murder. Uh, this guy is illegal. He is here because Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have allowed an open border. And he then went on next day to uh, do a little softball interview on MSNBC, and he said, I regret calling the man who killed Lake and Riley illegal. Um, what kind of crazy world are we living in right now that this is, this is of any importance? This guy is illegal. He broke the law to come here. He uh, allegedly murdered a young woman. We know he broke the law in New York prior to going to Georgia. The fact that we had to do an interview after the State of the Union to talk about this is uh, is pretty sad as far as I'm concerned for the guy running for president. Yeah, I agree with you. And there's actually a lot of things going on here. We know that the Democrats are really insistent on controlling the language that is used. That is how they manipulate the nation. That is how they manipulate media is by controlling the language. We also know that the White House came out on uh, on Tuesday, I think, and they said, first of all, I want to be really clear about something. The president absolutely did not apologize. There was no apology anywhere in that conversation. He did not apologize. He used a different word is what the White House said. So we have another situation now where the White House is walking back the thing that Biden said uh, in the first place. And we also have a situation where, as you said, Biden and Kamala Harris, they are absolutely refusing to take responsibility for this border situation. And it is important to note, I think, that Jose Ibarra, who is charged with uh, Lake and Riley's murder, he's from Venezuela. And Venezuela is one of the special countries designated for refugee status by the Biden administration. I think there's 30,000 um, immigrants who are allowed in from a, a section of countries each month. And Venezuela is among them. Also, Haiti is among them. And so we have a situation where this is a preferred person. This is a person who gets special status based on the disaster in their home country. And these are the people that the Biden administration is actively seeking to let in. This is a person who, um, in one article I read, had applied for asylum. And in fact, the woman who's his wife said that they got married in order to team up on their asylum claims. Wow. I mean, there you go. Just just utilizing all of the the dumb rules that have been applied to this entire situation now 
to to try to further you know thwart our laws and such. And it's interesting to me, Alexis, because when you look at what voters in this country care about the most right now, these are people who are going to go out on November 5th or sooner in their states when they start early voting, and they're going to say, I feel like this person is best on my top issue, and that's who they're going to vote for. The top issue for most people is the border. It's the fact that we have allowed millions of people under Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's watch into this country. And I guess the attempt from the Biden administration, from his campaign perspective and from Joe Biden himself, although like Libby said, they did today try to walk it back. Um, I don't think it, I don't think anyone is confused about anything. I mean, Joe Biden obviously is confused about a lot. We all know what he's doing there. They're trying and attempting to still make it okay that they've let all of these people in. He also in this interview said they built this country, talking about illegal immigrants. That No, they didn't. The people who built this country, first of all, came over here and founded the United States of America. And then they said, you know what, we need to have a system that is in place in order to vet people coming in to make sure that, that we have a legal process in order to become citizens of the United States of America. Do you think it's going to work, Alexis, is my question, because it seems like they're still trying to flip the script and their attempt to convince people that, hey, this isn't that bad. Oh, these people built this country. Oh, this guy was an illegal, undocumented, is what Joe Biden said. Will right. that tactic work for people? I don't think so. I mean, like you said, the priorities of the voters are the border and the economy. And those are the two things that Biden didn't address in the State of the Union. I mean, it was the state of geopolitics, if you really look at it, is what he gave. The state on Ukraine, the state of you know, the Middle East, and, and, and people are upset about that anyway. Just the way that, of course, the White House is handling all of that, given our, our allies. But the border is a big issue, and I don't think it's a forgivable one. I think that people, they're starting to see the truth. You know, you can't really escape the truth. And as President Trump says, you know, they're not sending their best. They're not sending families. At first, we had the narrative where, oh, it's women and children coming over for a better life, seeking asylum. And unfortunately, that's just not the truth. They're sending military age men from all different countries, countries that are cleared by uh, by looking for asylum and countries that are that, that shouldn't be granted. But in the countries that are completely, you know, terrorist threats. And so you look at the math here and people, I think, are starting to put together the truth, even if they don't like it, even if they might have been on the side that was offended by him saying illegal. And in this context, I, I, I can't understand that. I completely agree with Libby on the semantics being an issue. You know, in 2013, the Associated Press designated um, undocumented as the word that the media should be using. And that's what everyone did because that was what they were told to do. And you see a decade later, the ramifications aren't subtle. You know, we have the Lake and Riley whole situation and we have these, you know, this isn't an isolated incident. We have these all over the country. Some are being reported on, some are not. And at the end of the day, I don't think it's something that voters will ignore. I hope they don't ignore it because we honestly, we have a country to save and if you continue in this direction, I, I don't know, you know, you can't just let every single person who wants to come in here come in. There will be some Libby who have ill intent whenever they cross that border. Yes, I'm sure there are some people who have the best of intentions when they come here. Doesn't mean you should break our laws to do it, but there are some who we know come here they're members of gangs. We know that uh, 169 on the terror watch list just last fiscal year were caught coming over. Those are the ones we caught. How about the ones who didn't get caught? You now have a report that gangs in New York City are selling fake green cards and social social security cards to the illegal, illegal immigrants in New York City. We know what a disaster that has been. Eric Adams is up in arms about it. He's now reversing policy on the sanctuary city status that New York has, um, $12 billion over three years. We know it's gonna cost the city of New York. You can get yourself one of these fake green cards or social security cards for around 80 to $250. You can uh, use those to get a driver's license, possibly a work permit, or Libby, to assume a new identity. I can't imagine what could go wrong here. Here's a quote from the article. 
Uh, Bruce Folkart, who was a special agent in charge of Homeland Security investigation, said for someone that wants to do terrorist activity or is a national security threat, it's easy to establish this second life within the U.S. I guarantee you right now, he said, we're just waiting for another 9-11. Yeah, isn't that interesting? I feel like the Democrats, in a, to a very large degree, have this false idea of who these people coming into the country are. They imagine, you know, our our ancestors who came in from Europe or something with just their little suitcase and looking for a better life. This is what they imagine for all of the illegal immigrants who are coming in. And it's a very naive view, and it's just not the case anymore. We have really established, organized, sophisticated illegal smuggling operations for drugs, for human beings, all of this stuff. And the Democrats just assume like, oh, these are little families and they just want a better life. It's so naive and ridiculous that this is what they think. And it's sort of shocking. It's like, it's like it, the Democrats at the same time as they are saying that these are wonderful people and boosting them up, they're looking down on them and assuming that they're not sophisticated enough to game the system, which of course they are and is of course what's happening. So yeah, we see this going on in New York. I'm sure it's happening in other places as well. People selling fake green cards, taking pictures of the person on the street and putting them into the fake green yeah. cards. And you see all across the southern border, people ditching their IDs to get into the country and then just, yes, establishing a brand new identity and a brand new life. Um, I, I'm, I'm shocked that this is even what we're allowing to have happen. And we had Christopher Ray today come out and say that, yes, there's probably some ISIS connections going on as well. And as the rest of the world continues its steady falling apart, its steady decline, we have Haiti is blowing up right now. We have the Middle East is, you know, blowing up in sections. We have people coming in from all over the place. And we have also reports of immigrants saying to their friends back home, hey, I'm getting all kinds of free stuff here in the U.S. They're giving me money and I can get a fake green card and all of this stuff. Uh, when is this going to stop? When is the Biden administration going to wise up? When are the American people going to wise up and say this is not what what we should have happen to our nation. This is not compassionate and it's certainly not good for the country and it's not good for Americans. Yeah, well, it's not going to stop anytime soon because Libby, they're just allowing it to happen, right? If you are out, this is a, another part in, in this report. Um, apparently what they do is they, they say, give me $80 and I'll give you a fake social security card. The guy said, I need your name, your whole name, your age. I can take your picture. Like you said, right out on the street, take a picture of you and they put it together. Um, they said if they're doing social security numbers and nobody says anything next time, it'll be weapons and passports. Everyone can do what they want now. Alexis, I just... To me, yeah, we have a, a situation in New York City where we know criminals are running rampant. We know that they're not focused in New York on actually locking up people who commit crimes. DA Alvin Bragg is more concerned with Donald Trump and some nonsense political vendetta against him than he is locking people up who are shoving people in front of subways, assaulting folks on the street, cleaning out CVS and Walgreens. They don't care about actually pursuing criminals. And on top of that, because of all of the illegal immigrants there, they've slashed the budget of the NYPD and the NYPD officers by one fifth in the city of New York. This isn't going to stop. It is going to continue happening until you get someone in there who is actually serious about cracking down on crime. Until you get someone at the top, like Donald Trump, who has said from day one, from the moment he came down in 2015 and announced he was running for president, he said this is a serious problem in America. It is far worse now than it has ever been. If we don't start at the top and work our way down with people who are serious about addressing this issue, I really am terrified for the outcome of this country. I do believe we are on the verge of something really serious happening, a la Christopher Ray, a la all of the uh, people who have come in on the terror watch list or tried to come in at least. We are poised for a national disaster right now. Absolutely. I think the, the threat is obviously incredibly serious, especially a place like New York that's gone through a cleanup before that's been revived. You know, we've seen this. We've seen this get better. It's almost as if and, and we know this is true. They're purposefully ruining these metropolitan centers. Yeah. 
and of course importing illegal immigrants that they can use as a barter chip to vote in elections to oh we don't need voter id we don't need all the, like these are the threads that they've been trying to unravel and as they do this they're vilifying good and they're celebrating lawlessness they're celebrating a country without a border which is not a country and again like you said you see eric adams they they do all these things to get into office they um, make all these promises of course to the to the democrat uh, party and then they get in there and they go my city is falling apart and we see some of this reversal now but it's absolutely not enough you know at the local level we do need leadership at the very top like president trump to come in here and fix things from the top mass deportation you know it's one of those things where we are in a emergency uh situation now it's not it's not easily fixed by legislature. And as as you said, we see the DOJ and, and obviously the justice system weaponized against good people who would be for cleaning this up and completely letting crime just go. I mean, it's 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 running rampant on the streets. We see our cities fall apart and nobody's doing anything about it. It's going to get worse. Yeah. And what's interesting to me, it's funny, my my father in law often talks about how he thinks he could flip the state of New York from blue to red. I mean, we know New York has been blue, 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 right? It, it is a very hard idea and a prospect to consider that you would have enough votes for a Republican in the state of New York when you have New York City and the suburbs there that are always going to be dark blue uh, for that to flip. But things like this, Libby, are what I find very interesting. We are in a very unprecedented time. You have a unique situation right now in which we, we really have never seen in our lifetime. You've never seen two men who have both been president of the United States, both have a track record, both you can look at them and say, here's how these guys would be in office. You have Donald Trump, four years of him on one side. We know how things were under his leadership. We know how much more money people had in their pockets, how low the cost of gas was. We were energy independent on the verge of a net energy exporter. We we had no new wars around the world. In fact, we had peace agreements signed in the Middle East. We felt safe and secure as a country. Trade agreements that were historic with Mexico, with, uh, with uh, Canada and China. We know how he is. We know what we feel right now on the other side of things. We know how bad things have gotten under Joe Biden. We know how hard it is day to day just to make ends meet for people. We're on the verge of World War III. We've got a war between Russia and Ukraine. We have a war in the Middle East right now. It feels like we're being dragged into both of those unnecessarily. And it's a really scary time for people. So you couple all of that with the illegal immigration issue. And I look at states like New York and I say, I don't know, maybe Donald Trump is on to something there. I can tell you one thing, he will show up in New York. There will be massive rallies in New York. He will go to places where Republicans don't traditionally go because people are fed up. I look at states like Massachusetts, always a blue state. You have Massachusetts allocating $10.5 million of taxpayer money to resettle 400 illegal immigrant families in the state. They are using these resettlement agencies, Libby, uh, and they are tasked with finding people who broke our laws to come here, housing and getting them jobs. You have how many millions of Americans right now who are looking for work? This is what's going on in the state of Massachusetts. It makes me think people might be fed up enough there to say enough with the Democrats. They've let us down. I'm ready to vote for Republicans. Yeah, and Massachusetts is a state, too, where the tax dollars go really far for residents. There's um, all kinds of health care. There's paternity leave. There's all kinds of things for residents. And you see now that with the influx of illegal immigrants, there have been some decreases in what residents are getting. There was a rec center in Roxbury, Massachusetts, which is a predominantly black neighborhood, a rec center for kids to go after school, play sports, part of, you know, we've seen for years, get kids off the streets, put them in rec centers, organized activities, all like that. And the governor shut that down in order to house illegal immigrants there. We're seeing yep. the wealthy Bostonians. They are not liking having influxes of illegal immigrants in their neighborhoods, taking over buildings that are not otherwise being used. And I think Donald Trump should go into New York City. It's his hometown. He should go there. He should talk to New Yorkers. He knows how to talk to New Yorkers. You know, that's one of the things that ends up being so misunderstood about him in media is media doesn't always hear New Yorkers speak their mind and speak so directly. 
and that's something that Trump does so well. And I think he should go into the city and he should he should tell New Yorkers why they should vote for him. You know, New York knows Donald Trump. Uh, Trump knows New York. And I think that would be great. I would love to see a rally at Madison Square Garden. I yes. think a lot of us would. That would be so cool. But yeah, I think people are fed up with it. I think New Yorkers are fed up with it. And we're seeing New Yorkers, again, are suffering under the weight of increased crime. You have National Guard searching your bag on the subways. New Yorkers hate this. You know, I mean, as someone who lived in New York for primarily my entire adult life, looking at this, it's just a horror show. I remember the last time they were searching bags in the subways and I would go down, I would see a checkpoint and I just... I couldn't handle it. And I would just go walk 50 blocks instead. You know, I'm not not up for that. And a lot of New Yorkers feel exactly the same way. They're ruining the greatest city on earth. And it's it's really got to it's really got to stop. And um, I, I can't wait to see what Trump can come in and do and fix with all of these things and around the world. Do you remember Biden came in and said the adults are back in charge? Oh, well, it turns out that the adults were in charge. And then we put the petulant middle schoolers in charge who are really mostly concerned with their own feelings. And I would frankly like to see some adults back in charge, actually negotiating around the world, actually getting respect for the United States and actually maintaining our sovereignty. I uh, couldn't agree with you more. And I think what's funny is when you talk about Donald Trump, you're right. He was a New Yorker for so long, and he's the first one who will tell you throughout his time as a businessman, he was like, look, I didn't really tune into politics that much. I donated to everybody because that's what makes the wheels turn. That's what greases the wheels. You donate to all these politicians. And he said, I know politicians because I used to donate to them all. And recently I loved this. I actually posted this on my story. He said, I'm not conservative. You know what I am? I'm a man of common sense. Alexis, how refreshing. Common sense. That's what all this stuff comes down to. It is basic that you need to have a secure border. It is basic that if you shut down the Keystone XL pipeline, you're going to raise our gas prices. It's going to weaken us as a country. It's going to give leverage to countries like Russia. It's going to enrich Russia and Iran. It's, It's just common sense stuff. I'm just, look, obviously this is my family. This is my father-in-law. I am now uh, proudly the co-chair of the Republican National Committee. And there's nothing I'm more focused on right now than ensuring Donald Trump is back in that White House. But I'm just going to state it now. This is a huge tent that is open to everyone in this party. What we are going to see happen, I believe, over the next eight months, I think is going to, first of all, it's going to get crazy. But I actually think that we are on the verge of a historic election because we are in a time right now, Alexis, like we really have never seen in America. People are are really at their wits end. And I think they have gone so hard against this one man that it actually is making a lot of people who never thought they would vote Republican in their life sit up and say, wait a minute. I actually think that I've been lied to about this. I actually think they've gone so far with this one guy. There must be some reason they don't want him in. I'm going to predict right here, right now, Donald Trump is going to win by a historic margin. Now we're leaving nothing to chance. Don't kid yourself. We're going to work hard over the next eight months. But people are starting to get it. What are you seeing out there, Alexis? Because I got to tell you, everywhere I go, I am kind of shocked sometimes by the people who come up to me and I'm like, wow, I never I never would have guessed. But I, I love to hear it and you love to see it. Absolutely. No, I completely agree. I, I agree that it will be historic. You know, I'm I'm in California right now for work. And it's interesting, you know, you're you're here and you're you're you know, you're in California and you look around and you don't see one Biden Harris hat. It's just it's the mm. crazy thing. You know, as for a state that is allegedly blue and for an environment that's allegedly very progressive. I'm not seeing any Biden merchandise, you know, and so it's funny because it seems like it's a small thing, but it just makes you that more sure that people either don't care or they're having people who shouldn't be voting in elections vote in elections or they're just starting to wake up. And I really do think that it's a combo. I think that people are starting to wake up generationally. I think that the kids are starting to see that, you know, they might not be able to buy a house in their lifetime. Right. Right. If you told someone that 20 years ago, they would look at you like you were crazy. 
You know, the fact that this is an actual prospect that you might not be able to buy a house. The interest rates on cars are insane. I've seen things that even, you know, you see these things like uh, even renting out a house, buying a home and renting it out. Some of these business ideas that that young adults think are available to them. And right now in this economy, in Bidenomics, it's at a deficit. You could rent it out and you'll lose 200 to $300 a month. I mean, these things are, are tangible realities. And as you move through the generations, each one, I believe, has a different reason. You know, people want to have kids. They're looking at the prospect of having kids and looking towards the future, my generation included, and they go, I need a better America in order to want to do that and to be able to afford to do that, which is really sad because that's ultimately, of course, how you make the world a better place at some point is to is to have kids and have a good environment. And so I think that in the grand scheme of things, think people are starting to have common sense and they're starting to wake up. Um, I agree completely about New York. And like I said, in California, I think that there's a strong chance even even out here on this coast that people are are waking up. I know that it's it's mainly the very blue counties that control the voice for the entire state, but I think that people are starting to see it and, and the way that the delegates and everything are, are kind of re reworking right now. I, I just I think that there's a shot on on the coast that we've never seen before um, for for Republicans in this um, in this last couple of decades. And so I think that uh, common sense is starting to be um, more of a more of a prevalent thing, um, hopefully, in this in this year in this election cycle. I hope so. We are we're right now we're looking at something that we've never seen, which is that future generations are going to be worse off than the older generations, and that is that's a really sad prospect uh, for the greatest country on earth. All right, I want to talk about doomsday prepping very quickly before before we get back to serious stuff. But we're going to take a quick commercial break. Don't move. Hate to interrupt the show, but if you know anything about me, you know how seriously I take my health. One of the ways I stay healthy is taking Balance of Nature's fruits and veggies in a capsule. They have an amazing story of how this product was developed by Dr. Douglas Howard. Balance of Nature receives over a thousand success stories every single month. They have hundreds of thousands of customers who've purchased billions of capsules of their fruits and veggies over the past 20 years. Their products are gluten-free and non-GMO, and they contain no added sugars or synthetics. If you're looking for something to make you feel better naturally, you should definitely give Balance of Nature a try. Whether you order online or call them direct, you can use the promo code LARA to get this special offer of 35% off, plus $10 off any additional sets, plus free shipping and their money-back guarantee. You can call them at 800 246-8751 246-8751 and use discount code LARA or order online at balanceofnature.com and use discount code LARA to get 35% off. All right, Mike Lindell has a passion to help you get the best sleep of your life. After he invented the world's best pillow, he created the famous Giza Dream Sheets. They're the best sheets you will ever sleep on. And for a limited time, you can get a queen set for $59.98, a king set for just $69.98. This is the lowest price in history. Mike and my pillow continue to be canceled by big box stores and attacked by the media. They appreciate all of your great support during these times and want to thank you by giving you free shipping on your entire order today. To get these specials, go to mypillow.com or call 800-624-3945 and use promo code TRUMP. You get the famous Giza Dream Sheets, queen size for only $59.98 and king size for just $69.98. You will also get 60% off the original My Slippers. So call 800 624 3945 or go to mypillow.com and use promo code TRUMP for free shipping today. All right, Libby, I don't know if you're a doomsday prepper at all. Um, what I'll say is that my husband has sort of been banking on this, sort. This I'm going to say his whole life. Like I envision him as a child basically setting himself up so that he can he can survive. He is an, an avid fisherman, an avid hunter. He all often likes to let me know that if necessary, he could live off the land. We're going to be all set. I'm a very lucky lady. I'm just going to throw that, that out there. There have been a, a lot of people who've been talking about doomsday prepping because I think there's no, obviously there's no doubt we all feel like there's a lot of war going on and maybe we're on the verge of World War III. Thank you, Joe Biden. Didn't have that with Donald Trump. COVID certainly showed us all that 
things can get pretty bleak pretty quickly. And really how vulnerable, Libby, we all are. I mean, we are so reliant on our phones. I, I it give people just general driving directions without a phone. They're never going to get to their destination. Um, but you now see that out there, there are a lot of people who are advertising for kits that contain, like, for example, a one-month supply of freeze-dried meals. That'll run you around $600. You could also get a one-person nuclear survival kit for an, uh, roughly $720. A hazmat suit will cost you $120. My question is, Libby, if all of this goes down, let's say there's a nuclear war and we're in a nuclear winter type situation. Do you want to be alive for that? <laughs> would you purchase this? Would you take it if someone gave it to you? There's my question. I would definitely take it if someone gave it to me. In terms of prepping, I, I have not particularly been prepping, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's starting during the during COVID, I did start buying extra stuff. So I do have like masses of flour. I have... I have like yeah, we got boxes. a lot of like canned canned beans and stuff <laughs> I have like that, 30 right? Boxes of spaghetti. Like I have so yeah. much spaghetti in my cupboard. Um, I've been thinking about chickens, but I like to travel too much. I don't know what to do with them. So mm. no, I mean I think I think in the in the case of some sort of massive, you know, Holocaust or if they, you know, if they turn off my cell phone, I'm done for. You know, I got nothing. Yeah, I got no hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to lose Libby. It's too bad. You're, you're not going to be around. Alexis, here's what's interesting. So in some of the comments I was reading, I, this one I found very fascinating and it's so true. We, Like I said, we rely on other people or machines or, you know, AI now, I feel like for everything. Someone says, do you know how to make, repair, or maintain basic sanitation? Can you safely harvest and store game? Do you know how to make soap? Weave fabric, sew clothes, mill grain, blacksmith skills, medical training, dental. All of the people who think that their MREs and guns will see them through a large-scale disaster are fooling themselves. Because, I mean, basically the point of this is we've lost a lot of the trade skills in this country. It's a really sad thing to think about, but no one really focuses on it. And it used to be that in order to survive, think about the wild, wild west. Think about the westward expansion back, you know, 150 years ago, people had to survive and they had to do for themselves. You had to be a carpenter to some extent. You had to be able to, to figure out how to dry food and store it for long-term, can things, medical training, basic medical training. We don't know how to do any of that, Alexis. We're so, I mean, if this happens, I feel like that's it. We're done. I know, you know, it's, I, I, I really believe in the move towards trades. I think that learning yeah. that of course, in this in this accelerated time structure where we look at what's going on in the world, I think that it's a little bit more daunting because it's not like we can say, OK, let's re-implement, you know, home ec. They took home ec out of high schools um, around when I was in school and I didn't understand that. I thought, you know, why why wouldn't we be teaching this thing? And I think, you know, of course, I believe that it's all connected. I think that, you know, they make fun of women being in the home. They make fun of having kids. They make the let they being the left. They make fun of trade school. You know, they try to vilify all of these things that could actually contribute to our community and contribute to our survival. They try to interrupt discussions, make sure that we don't have open forums on the Internet. You know, all of these things, I do believe, contribute to trying to limit our survival and trying to limit our independence from, of course, the government and depending on, on an outside source instead of our neighbor, instead of our family. Um, I can't tell you one friend of mine um, that could probably live off the land in this way. You know, you mentioned even blacksmithing and that's something yeah. I even think of. You know, I can I can can. My mom's pretty crafty. She's oh. good at that. So like I'm like, okay, I can can. But that's kind of where it ends for me. And so when I think about the huge list of those things, I really do, you know, it, it's kind of maybe it sounds silly, but I think the the prospect of nuclear, you know, kind of that whole issue that people prep for, I have the same message for that that I do for even what we're moving towards in this in this election cycle is we need to stick together and we need to invite people in and we not from the border, but invite people into the community <laughs> that have the same values 
and really band together. You know, there's there's really only one way out, and that is that is banding together and um, embracing community. And I do want to see more of a move towards trade schools, and I know that's something that um, President Trump has said as well. And so that's that's obviously something that I hope comes with um, with the presidency uh, the following year. And so I I do I believe that people would be not very well off, and that's no. why they're looking at these MRE kits. I mean, uh, g- good luck to all of us, I guess. You know, sometimes it, you think about even like basic stuff like penicillin or something. I mean, we are so we are so lucky and we are so advanced as a society. I think about it all the time. You know, you get a cut and it starts to kind of hurt a little bit. You put a little Neosporin on it and it's all good. 200 years ago, you might die from it, Libby. I don't it's I don't know if I want to be around after that. I guess <laughs> I would take it if someone gave me the the hazmat suit or the nuclear survival kit. But then you kind of look around and you're like, well, I now what? Now it's now it's re- the real, you know, problem starts. So, it's a scary prospect. Let's hope Donald Trump is reelected and we don't have to get to that situation. Um we talked before on this show I mean, we talk a lot about the virtue signaling in Hollywood, and we know that they recently, uh, in the past year, this was the first Oscars we saw on Sunday, which I didn't watch, didn't care to watch, haven't watched that that sort of garbage and that trash in a long time. But they put in these like DEI requirements that you needed to meet these certain standards that needed to be met, supposedly, Libby, to um, in order to receive an Oscar. You had to meet these standards. Well, now it seems that everyone is coming out within, you have kind of people in the back rooms of Hollywood saying like, those requirements were very flimsy and they were sort of just for show. It was sort of just a talking point for us to act like we were doing something, just more virtue signaling from Hollywood. We know how they usually do. So what's going on is there are four requirements that you need to meet in order to be considered diverse enough to be up for an Oscar. But a movie only has to meet two of the Academy's four requirements as it turns out to be diverse in terms of the cast and the crew. What is happening is that you have these movies that have won awards like Oppenheimer, for example, that I'm pretty sure was an all-white cast. And the way they do it is the studio has things like a minority internship program and employees minorities in key roles. So their whole goal of like trying to trying to say that they're doing so much to integrate, um, you know, minorities or, you know, different communities that aren't represented very much in the film industry. It was all just for show, Libby, as it turns out, as everything else is on the left. And all these people are saying, wow, what a waste of time and energy that we had to go this far with the virtue signaling. Yeah, I think it's true about um, how they feel about women as well. You see all this like women empowerment in movies and it's like female forward and everything. And then the movie that they really, really celebrated at the Oscars, which I did watch mostly because I was waiting to see if anybody screwed up. And I like the dresses, I gotta say, I like seeing all the fashion, but um, they celebrated this movie for things, which is about a woman who uh, is, is she has a, a toddler's mind. She has like a baby mind that has been put into her body and she's obsessed with sex and she runs around sleeping with everybody. So this is, and she's white, right, of course. Yeah. So this, is, this is what they're celebrating. They're celebrating a sex-obsessed woman with a child's mind. And they're talking about how beautiful this is and how spectacular it is. And yes, the costumes were cool, but the movie is very weird. I started watching it and I was like, ah, I don't know about this. This is very disturbing and creepy. I don't like that she has this baby brain in a grown-up body and that this is what's going on. Very peculiar. Yeah, Hollywood has absolutely no interest in actually going forward with any of their, you know, virtue signaling things. They have no morality other than total depravity. And that is, again, on display, as we've seen. One of the uh, one of the tweets I saw about this, Alexis said, the purpose of any awards program is to foster and recognize excellence from whoever and wherever it arrives. Quota programs are the antithesis of that ideal. Couldn't agree more. Absolutely. That's and this is what we've seen with every policy like this. You know, DEI doesn't make anything more diverse or more fair. All it does is put a quota on 
what was likely already happening. You know, if people are are casting, you know, if you want to really go and dive into the movie world, if people are casting the best character for the person that they represent, you know, it it's not about having a DEI statement. And the whole Oscar situation anyway, you know, I remember, um, I was at the Golden Globes. I don't know. I'm so bad. At ke- I, I don't really keep track. But a couple of weeks ago or months ago, um, they were, people were mad that Barbie didn't win something, that Greta Gerwig, the director, didn't yeah. win you know, whatever, because Barbie, and I, I, granted, I didn't see it. Um, I didn't see Oppenheimer either, but it was so, you know, it was so widely um, contested that, you know, the I Am Ken Off, the Ken song won instead of Billie Eilish's song for the movie. And I know it's such an encapsulated example, but people weren't talking about the merit of the movie. They weren't saying, you know, Oppenheimer was a historical, you know, film that was this, but Barbie really displayed this, that. It was all about the fact that it was a female-led and directed and produced film, and it was all on on the merit of, you know, a DEI policy essentially. And so I couldn't tell you which one people actually thought was better, because all people were talking about was who directed it, and it kind of it, it made a martyr even out of Greta Gerwig, um, who who directed Barbie. And so for me, I just think that these policies, they really, they make a mockery of actual art and companies and universities. And of course, as we've seen with the Supreme Court decision, affirmative action, and and some of these policies aren't actually um, allowed anymore. Yet universities are still trying to find ways around them. I read an article the other day that said, you know, how to basically how to still have an affirmative action and DEI policy um, around the Supreme Court ruling. And oh so gosh. It, it just, it doesn't support growth and it doesn't support actual progression. You know, we don't actually grow right. if, if there's a quota on it. It's funny when, when all of this was first introduced, when my grandpa, my papa was still in the workforce, he was discussing you know, hiring people. And he said, you know, honestly, it, you want to hire the best person. I don't really care what they look like. He was the son of immigrants. He didn't care. It, it didn't matter to him. He just, you want to hire the best person for the job. And I remember it being a hurdle that he would tell me about back then. The fact that mer- this is a meritocracy. You know, you want people hired by their ner- merit and not the color of their skin or their gender or anything. And so for this to be a policy in Hollywood, you know, it's, it's, it's such an intentional um, such an intentional blue leftist thing just to make sure that that's what we're consuming. That's what we're watching. That's what we're accustomed to. And, uh, and, and make sure that you feel bad if you criticize it. Yeah. It's unnatural the way they do it. And they try to shove it down everybody's throats. Just let it be. And, and the cream always rises to the top. Alexis, sort of, as you said, you want people based on merit and, I'll tell you, I say it all the time as a woman, don't ever give me a job based on the fact that I'm a woman or anything other than my qualifications for the job and merit based. If I'm not the best person for that role, never give it to me. I never want it because it's a slap in the face to people to do that sort of thing. Before we go today, just want to really quickly talk about electric cars. The EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, is looking into electric cars now because they're saying that they may be more toxic Libby than gas powered vehicles. Don't say we didn't tell you so because people have been talking about this for a long time. There was a study that seemed to suggest that electric vehicles release more particulate matter than their um, through their tires and brakes than gas powered vehicles. And that's because the batteries in these cars are so heavy that the brakes and the tires combined together are releasing all this particulate matter into the air. They emit 1,850 times more particulate matter than the average gas tailpipe does. These are like microplastics that are released into our environment. And we know what is it the left is always talking about. They're talking about carbon emissions. They're talking about climate change. Manufacturing these electric vehicles pollutes 20% more than gas car production and emits more carbon. So here we are in 2024 when Joe Biden has said that he wants everybody to start driving electric vehicles. California proposed a ban on gas vehicles as soon as 2035. And yet here we are, this this is all, all the hype. What do you think? Are you surprised, Libby? I'm not surprised. I don't think you're surprised either, Laura. 
Uh, and a number of states followed California's plan to uh, prevent the sales of gas-powered vehicles. I think it was, yeah, 2030 or 2035. New York is going along with this. And I say, you can take my gas-powered car from my cold, dead hands. It's absolutely not. <laughs> I will absolutely not give in to one of these things. Uh, the times I've used them, they are also terrible. They don't, you know, you can't ever get, get these things charged. And the other thing, too, that people don't like to mention is where we source our batteries and where we source the materials for those batteries. Yes. You have lithium. Lithium needs to be mined. You have mines with children in them all over the place. You know, this is absolutely a terrible idea. And for some reason... Um, we keep looking to EVs instead of trying to, you know, figure out better ways to do gas powered vehicles, which we've already seen do so well. And that's not it's not just EVs in terms of, you know, cars, but it's also this push for solar and wind. Why don't we ever take another look at nuclear? The baby boomers have made us so yeah. terrified of everything nuclear uh, that we can't even look at what would probably be a much better technology to see us forward. And the history of humanity is really, in a lot of ways, the history of energy consumption. And we're we're almost intentionally going backwards for reasons that we can't even prove. Um, we can't even prove that our new plans have any any real benefit. So yeah, I. I sort of, I definitely laughed when I saw this story pop up on my feed and I thought to myself, that's right, people, go ahead, do the new stupid thing just because it's new and stupid and you can't actually think for yourself again. Um, yeah, it may, yeah. The people, makes people feel good, Libby. <laughs> sure to does. say like, I'm helping, I'm helping the environment. Here's and it's my like what take. Alexis was saying, make sure you feel bad, right? Make sure you yeah. feel bad when Thanks. you drive your car around because uh, yeah. you're, not, you're not supposed to enjoy it. Just guilt us all into everything. The thing that I found interesting from this article too, Alexis, is it says the average person will already, without the extra particulate matter from these electric vehicles, will eat, drink, and breathe on average between 78,000 and 211,000 microplastic particles per yeah. year. Look, we live in a time where there's just, there's, it, this is the life we have. Things are plastic, things are fake. Thing, we're putting things into and on our bodies that we didn't do for eons. Yeah, there are gonna be some issues with that, but trying to force everybody to buy an electric vehicle is clearly not the right solution. I, look, I, I wish in a perfect world we could have something. And by the way, Libby, I love that you brought up nuclear. We should be looking at nuclear for a whole host of different things. It is it is the future. It is the way forward. People have this mindset that it's it's incredibly dangerous. It's incredibly clean. It is it is incredibly safe. Um, we need to start talking more about that. But yeah, the uh, the microplastics, uh, Alexis, I was uh, sort of disgusted and horrified by that. Microplastics are major. I have been looking into this and freaking out about it for a very long time, um, as long as really the conversation has been going on, because you see it's in everything. And a lot for a long time, the conversation was BPA and water bottles and all this stuff. And really, just by existing, um, the way, you know, this, this convenience culture, we end up using plastic and consuming plastic and not even, I mean, respectfully, not in an ecological way, like in a, in, a, in a conservatory way, but even just in a health way. We're consuming all of these all of these microplastics. And I agree, I feel like people don't understand that. But of course, the movement is towards what makes you feel bad and what they can control you with. The grid itself isn't prepared for an electric shift. I mean, the, the CEO of Ford just did a cross-country trip in his you know, Ford F-150 Lightning and he ended up saying that it was massively inconvenient and it was kind of scary going on stretches without electric. And I'm glad, honestly, that he admitted that and it, from that experience. But it's things like this that you see a government that's propelling us at light speed towards something that would be completely disastrous. And like you said, wind, they're promoting wind, which is also disastrous, solar energy, which is totally inefficient and more expensive. And, you know, the whole host of things that are completely wrong with what they're promoting. And then you just go back to a health thing. And it, it really does feel as though, you know, no matter the cost, no matter the health cost, no matter what what it means for, for constituents and people and just Americans, um, they don't care. They don't care. It looks good to promote pro to promote electric vehicles. It looks good to keep us in this convenience culture because it keeps us again dependent on them. 
Yep. I'm, and I'm going to go back to Donald Trump's own words. Common sense. It's not so common as it turns out, but we need to get back to a place where it is. And I think that will happen on November 5th of this year. So Libby and Alexis, thank you for joining us today for The Right View. As always, great stuff. Thank you to both of you. And thank you to everybody at home, as always, for joining us. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and follow. We'll see you back here next time for more of The Right View. And I won't back down. Nothing is worse than being on a phone call that drops. Nothing is worse than trying to text someone and you can't reach them because your phone is out of service range. And nothing is worse than supporting these major corporations and companies who don't support us. That is why I love Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless network. They use every cell tower out there available to all networks so that they have the greatest 4G and 5G coverage nationwide, and they support the causes that are important to us as conservatives. If you go today to patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump and use the promo code Trump, you will get free activation today. Again, that is patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump. The promo code is Trump for free activation so that you can get a great cell plan and feel good about doing it.